Kat when it bocor, maksudnya all the water with, together with the radiated substances is going to come out. So, it's going to be able to be detected by the GM counter. And your GM counter is going to make a lot of sound. Hi, I'm Gavin. Welcome back to another new video. Today, we're going to continue on with our Terengganu Science PT3 paper for their PT3 2019 trial last year. Hey, the last video, we only stopped at bagian B. We did a couple of questions. Okay, now we're going to go to bagian C and we're going to take some time to slow down. I know sometimes we're going to be talking a lot okay, on the questions. We're going to explain a lot on the questions. But I think this is the best way for us to learn together. Okay, going into PT3. Why? Because sometimes we may not have uh, pay attention when we were in Form 1, pay attention when we were in Form 2, pay attention when you're in the beginning of Form 3. And when it's close to Form 3, PT3, then you start to be very nervous. So what happens is, we need to, at the same time, we look at exam questions, at the same time, we study the syllabus. Okay, to ensure that we don't leave anything out. So if you have understood, Okay, whatever we are coming across, then bear with me. Okay, or if you want, you can be patient, go through every single second with me so that we are able to ensure that kita mempunyai semua maklumat dalam tangan semasa kita masuk ke dalam Dewan Peperiksaan semasa P3 Oktober 2020 nanti. Kita tidak akan menyesal semasa keluar, semasa habiskan, semasa menghantarkan uh, our question or kertas ujian ke pemeriksa, kita tidak akan sesal sebab kita tidak okay, mem, uh, menumpukan perhatian semasa we go through the exam questions. Okay, so let's make sure that we go through all the exam questions properly. Hey now, let's go to bagian C, which is question 6A. Okay, so we know these chemistry questions because you can see already the reactivity series. Okay, this we call it the reactivity series. Okay, reactivity series. That means this reactivity series is talking about telling you the logam, okay, or even some non-metals, how reactive these metals or these non-metals are to reactions. Reactions as in what? Air ke? Oxygen ke? Reaction. Okay, so let's see question. Najwan and his friends carry out an experiment to investigate the reaction of metals with oxygen. Okay, maksudnya, they are using reactifan, okay, logam-logam ini to react it, okay, to react it. Kadi tindak balasnya antara logam dengan oksigen. Eh, dengan oksigen. So, diagram below shows the reactivity of metals from the experiment. Okay, magnesium, aluminium, zinc, iron, Tin, lead. So we know that it's all metals. So let's uh, start with the first question. State one metal which is more reactive than iron. And you can see that there is an arrow here which tells you when you are going down from the top to the bottom, you are actually going to decrease the reactivity. Reactivity akan menurun. Reactivity akan menurun. So what happens is you know that lead which is at the bottom here is going to have the lowest, lowest of this reactivity. And on top here which is magnesium is going to have the highest, okay, highest reactivity. This Magnesium, for your information, the reactivity is so high that when you burn it, okay, when you burn it with oxygen, you can see that the flame is so bright that you are unable to see anything. It is that bright. Okay, so we know that magnesium, highest reactivity, late, lowest reactivity. So now, state one metal which is more reactive than iron. Maksudnya apa? We must find a metal that is kat atas ke kat bawah. Mesti kat atas. Why? Because on top is going to be more reactive. That's why we are going to write our answer magnesium. We are going to write our answer or aluminium. Okay? Sukati. Sukati. Sebab menyatakan satu logam. Jadi, sukati. And zinc. Okay? Asalkan you write magnesium, aluminium, zinc. Salah satu, okay. Jangan, jangan write iron. Jangan, jangan write besi. Why? Because besi is the question they're asking you. Okay? Besi and besi, same reactivity. Jangan, jangan write timah. Jangan, jangan write plumbum. Why? Because those two that is bawah besi, uh, bawah besi tu, it is going to be more or less reactive. Okay? So, second. Name the compound form when lead reacts with oxygen. Maksudnya apa? Lead, which is plumbum. Okay? Semasa mempunyai tindak balas dengan oksigen, apakah nama uh, sebatian itu? We will call it a uh, lead. Oxygen, when it become compound, we call it oxide. Okay, when it call it compound, we call it oxide. So, lead oxide or plumbum oxida. Plumbum oxida. Okay, lead oxide or plumbum oxida. Okay, so now let's go to B. Table below shows the result of an experiment that carried out, okay, to investigate the reactivity of metals R, S, T toward water and steam. So, it says yes, no, yes, no, yes, no. Okay, so let's go to the question. Arrange the reactivity of metal in the descending order. 
okay, arrange the reactive, reactivity of matter in the same order. So we're going to put the screen a bit, um, we're going to zoom out a bit because we have to see the table. So, okay, so arrange the reactivity of matter. You know that T, both react with water and steam. Nampak ke tak? Water, yes. Steam, yes. R, one is yes, one is no. Steam, yes. Water, no. S, kedua-dua, tidak. Water, no. Steam, no. Okay, so, okay, this no sign, ah, no sign. So, what happens is, reactivity, starting with descending order. Descending means what? Descending means, descending means, descending means, very reactive, very reactive to not reactive. Very reactive to not reactive. So, we must start with T. Sebab, T mempunyai tindak balas dengan kedua-dua air dan steam. So, T. Second, we go to A. Because, satu ada, satu tak ada. A in the middle. Then, hujungnya S. Why? Because S tidak mempunyai tidak balas dengan mana-mana satu air ke steam. Okay? So, T, A, S. T, paling reaktif. S, the least. Kurang reaktif. Okay? So, number two. Set the reason for your answer. Okay? So, the answer I have told you just now. T reacts with both Okay, you want to write full also can. Reacts with both water and steam. Okay, then you say R reacts, reacts only with steam. Okay, then you talk about S. S does not, does not react with both. Okay, does not react with both. Okay, good. Full mark. Okay, come, C. So now they're taking this aluminum oxide and zinc oxide to put with the carbon. To put with the carbon to burn. Okay, to burn. They put in the crucible. Okay, why? Why crucible lah? Because it's solid. Okay, if solid, you put in the crucible. If it's liquid, you put in the beaker. So, since it's solid, you put in the crucible. And burn. Okay, with the Bunsen burner. So, now, they tell you, upon heating, he found that the zinc oxide in the crucible P changed to grey residue, but the aluminium oxide in crucible Q does not change. Does not change. Okay, does not change. Okay, so I've seen the question again, and we realize that uh, there is something wrong with the uh, let uh, the letters inside this uh, question because they tell you here. Okay, you see, uh, he found the zinc oxide in crucible P, tapi dalam mangkuk pijar P itu bukan zinc oxide itu aluminium oksida. Okay, aluminium oksida. So what happens is uh, they actually reverse. Okay, this actually Q, this actually P. Okay. So we will just follow whatever is in diagram. Diagram will be correct. Diagram will be correct. Okay, huh? Write the word equation representing the reaction that occurs in the crucible Q. Okay, so you know it takes zinc oxide, okay, which is a compound. Zinc oxide burn with carbon, burn with carbon heating, and then uh, it will uh, come up with two product. Okay, over here we call it product hasil. Okay, we have two products here. Okay, two products. So what happens? The first product is when you are burning the zinc oxide, that oxide will escape. Oxide will escape. Oxida akan cabut lari. You're going to have bucky zinc only. So we know that that's one, well, one of the product. Okay? That's one of the product. That metal will be left. It's just the metal itself, which is zinc. Okay? What happens is oxygen keluar. Okay? So what happens is, do you write oxygen here? In the kotak? Ta. Why? Because you know that you're burning together with oxygen. So what happens is, you know that this oxygen and this carbon will combine each other again to make carbon dioxide. Okay? So you have to be careful. There's a reason why they burn with the carbon. Because they want the carbon to react with the oxygen. And you know that carbon dioxide actually make out of carbon and oxygen. So, semasa kamu, okay, uh, what do you call that? You are memanaskan zinc oxida itu, oxide or the oxida is going to escape. Tapi, semasa oxida itu keluar daripada zinc oxida, dia akan tentumkannya dengan carbon to make carbon dioxida. Okay, so that's the answer. Zinc plus carbon dioxide. Okay, come, let's go to next question. Based on observation, state the position of carbon in reactivity series of metals. Reactivity of series. So you know that this actually, this carbon, eh, it will be either on top zinc or below zinc. Okay? But the question still got one metal which is aluminium. So they're asking you to arrange the aluminium, the zinc and the, uh, and the carbon. Okay? So what happens is you know that that carbon react with zinc. Kan tadi eh? Kan? The carbon mempunyai tindak balas dengan zinc oksida. Maksudnya zinc dapat uh, melakukan tindak balas dengan carbon dioxide. Uh, carbon. So, happens is we are going to have zinc in the middle. The zinc, uh, we write zinc first. Uh, and you have carbon react with the zinc. Okay? So, carbon react with the zinc. And what happens is 
you have the aluminium that cannot react with the carbon. Aluminium did not react with the carbon. Remember or not? This is not the instruction tell you. Carb uh, aluminium did not react with the carbon. So what happens is, aluminium, it cannot be, it cannot be together with the zinc. Okay, it cannot be together with the zinc. Why? Because if it's together with the zinc, that means it can react with the carbon. Since it cannot react with the carbon, this aluminium has to be somewhere else, which is in between. Okay, which makes it the C or the carbon in between the aluminium and the zinc. Alright, so we know that carbon, state the position of carbon in between AL, write the full name, huh? Okay, I'll just write the full name. Aluminium, write the full name, aluminium and carbon and uh, zinc, sorry, zinc. Okay, aluminium and zinc. Okay, good. Now, third, explain your observation. If magnesium powder, okay, spelling again wrong, powder, is used in this experiment. Okay, so you know that um, for it to react with carbon, for it to react with carbon, what must it be? It must be underneath carbon. It must be underneath carbon. The carbon must be more reactive than the metal for it to create a reaction. Okay, tadi, carbon is more reactive than the zinc. That's why it can react with the zinc oxide. But now, talking about magnesium, and you know that magnesium is going to be on top here. Okay, on top here, above aluminium some more. So what happens is, this magnesium, it cannot react with, or the carbon cannot react with the magnesium. So, no changes observed. No changes observed. Or, tak ada perubahan. Tak ada perubahan. Why? Sebab, magnesium, okay, or magnesium, magnesium is more reactive more reactive than carbon okay we said earlier on just now magnesium uh, we said earlier on just now you must be less reactive less reactive than carbon than carbon untuk mendapatkan tindak balas which is like here z is lower than c tindak balas more reactive than carbon tak ada tindak balas tak ada tindak balas so al on top of c tak ada tindak balas mg on top of c tak ada tindak balas okay so simple come let's go to number 7 good talking about radiation radioactive uh, this uh, radioactive particles okay pqr so let's see name radiation p you can see that radiation p it is not going, it's going to the negative plate. Okay, it's going to the negative plate. That's number one observation. P going to the negative plate. So it means that P has to be what? Positive. Positive attract negative. Or negative attract positive. Okay, so what happens is, you know that P is going to be alpha. So alpha, uh, alpha rays is going to be positive ray. Alpha ray is going to be positive ray. Q is going to be the, Q is going to be the gamma rays, which is not affected. And not affected by the uh, pol polarity or the negative positive. Okay? okay, now let's go to number two. State one similarity between the radiation PQR. So PQR is actually what? Ionizing radiation. Maksudnya, it can ionize the particles. When it's passing through those particles, it can ionize the particles. Okay, change the polarity, we call it ionizing. So it's ionizing radiation. All three can make these uh, uh, particles ionize. Okay, so this ionizing is actually how these radioactive particles become harmful. Okay, it ionize. So it will make your, uh, let's say your cells. Okay, if these radioactive particles pass through your cells, it's going to ionize your cells and it's going to be bad for you. That's why uh, cancer, okay, will, uh, will be producing cancer. So it's bad for it okay come let us find this half life okay half life is the time taken for the mass of a number of undecayed nuclei to be reduced half of its original number calculate the mass of m after 24.6 hours with its original mass of 100 grams okay 100 grams so what happens is Okay, so you're going to use the formula what's the formula the formula is going to be half of the time half of the time so let's see yeah huh? Beginning 100 grams, okay, beginning 100 grams, okay, beginning 100 grams. And then tell you that it is going to, uh, after 24.6 hours, it's going to be half, okay. After 24.6 hours, ah, here, this is, what is the missing, here, half-life, 8.2 hours, okay, 8.2 hours. So, what happens is, when it is down by 8.2 hours, 
okay hours it is going to become half okay half which is 50 gram after that down again 8.2 hours going to be 25 gram and then down again 8.2 hours going to be half half again half of 25 going to be 12.5 gram okay so that's your answer this one is missing in the english version okay it never tell you what is the half life okay you must know the half life for you to calculate it okay so you why why do we do it three times only because because 8.2 plus 8.2 plus 8.2 gives you 24.6 Okay, so the answer that you are going to put in is 12.5 gram. You can draw the diagram, definitely you can draw, no problem. Okay, that's your way of finding it. Okay, you put 12.5 grams, okay, that's all you want to know. Okay, from 100 become 12.5. Okay, number two, what is the meaning of a neutral atom? Okay, neutral. Neutral is, about, neutral is like gamma. Okay, gamma. Gamma ray is no uh, polarity, no positive, no negative, so it won't react with both positive and negative. Uh, alpha is going to be positive, beta is going to be negative, so let's uh, answer what is neutral. Okay, what is going to be neutral? Neutral means what? means that the electron okay electron and proton are the same amounts okay same amounts maksudnya apa bilangan elektron dan bilangan proton seimbang same so electron cancel the proton proton cancel the electron so become neutral eh if you have 10 you have 10 cancel each other then no more okay so it's become neutral if you have one more more than the other let's say electron more than the proton you will make this negative charge negative charge so you will become a, 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 um, this um, beta beta particle if you're going to have imbalance proton more than neutron uh, proton more than the electron what happens is positive charge so it's going to be beta, uh, alpha okay alpha okay come let's go to the second question see uh, uh, Geiger Muller, Geiger Muller counter, GM counter, GM counter going to detect. So what here is they are going to inject these um, radioactive uh, substances into the water source. Okay, they are going to put these uh, uh, radioactive sources lah. The, in liquid form, they are going to put it into the uh, uh, weapons in uh, this um, water source. Okay, they put it yeah, put it water source. Then the water will flow inside the long kang. Let's say they will flow. Water will flow in the long kang. What happens is when you have a leakage or you have a uh, kebocoran here at the piping that water is going to come out into here okay what happens is this water over here is going to contain what it's going to contain the radioactive particles or radioactive radioactive substances that you put in earlier on here so what happens is when you are going to use gm counter it is going to count the amount or the volume uh, of these uh, particles radioactive particles that are underneath the gm counter so what happens is um when the GM counter starts to sound, p p p p p sounds a lot. Maksudnya ada kebocoran sini sebab bilangan the particles here, which is the radioactive particles, is going to be more than the normal, the normal piping, the normal piping. Because normal piping, the water will just flow through, ma. You will bring the radioactive radioactive substances, will bring it together with it, so you won't feel it. You don't feel it in the GM counter. But when it bocor, maksudnya all the water with together with the radioactive substances is going to come out. So it's going to be able to be detected by the GM counter, and the GM counter will going to make a lot of sound. So you know that that is going to be uh, that is where. Okay, the leakage happen. So our instrument is detected to detect any leak. So what happens is you will know that the uh, amount, okay, amount of radioactive particles, or amount of radioactive radioactive particles are more when they at the leakage point. Particles are more, okay, more at leakage point. Leakage point. Maksudnya the the tempat bocor lah, okay. Okay, tempat bocor itu, leakage point. Okay, if you have normal, when you go through the GM counter, eh, you go, go through 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, suddenly, suddenly, 100, 200, 300, then you know that is where it's leaking. Okay, then you know where it's leaking. Okay, so, okay, if you want to add the answer, kadar pembilangan, eh, lebih tinggi uh, semasa uh, uh, kamu uh, uh, melalui, okay, tempat kebocoran dengan pembilang GM. Okay, that's the BM answer. Okay, number two. Radioactive radiation is used in the food industry to preserve food. What is the role of the gamma ray in this process? Now, this gamma ray, we know that it is uh, very harmful okay, to cells. Okay, harmful to cells. So what happens is, when you shoot the gamma ray okay, to, let's say, thin, okay, to preserve the food, what happens is, it's going to kill okay, all the bacteria. Kill all the bacteria. And you know that bacteria is what make the food spoil. So when you kill the bacteria using the gamma ray, it is going to preserve the food because the bacteria cannot react with the food. It will make the food stay longer. Okay, membunuh bacteria to kill all the bacteria. Okay, good. We're done now. 
Next question. Table below shows an ion formation. Okay, ion maksudnya apa? Ion maksudnya kehilangan elektron. Okay, kehilangan elektron. It will make it, uh, the charge will be different. The charge. Okay, the charge will be different. So if you see a calcium atom, okay, does not have a charge there. Okay, on top here, does not have a charge. What happens is it means it's neutral. Okay, bilangan elektron dan bilangan proton itu seimbang. Jadi it becomes a neutral um, particle. Okay, neutral particle or neutral substance. So what happens is now we want to make it into an ion, which is ion Y. So what happens is, you know that ion Y is going to be two electrons less. Two electrons less. If you see here, 20 become 18. Two electrons less. So what happens is, it's going to be more protons. And just now, kan, ada tunjukkan keseimbangan antara proton dengan elektron. So what happens is now, when you have the proton more than the electron, maksudnya, this is positively charged. How much positively charged? Two positively charged. Why? Because it is two proton more than electron. Two proton more than electron. So what happens is, you are going to write the answer is, you can either write calcium 2 plus or Y2 plus will be accepted. Okay? Ion Y and calcium. Now, all you have to be careful uh, is, is this 2 plus there. You cannot write plus 2. Okay? This should be wrong. We call it 2 plus. Okay? That's the way lah. The chemists chemist have made it 2 plus. Okay? So we write 2 plus. Number 2. How many electrons are the calcium atom loses? Okay? 2 electrons. Okay? We told you just now. It's 2 electrons lost. That's why it is 2 protons more. So it is going to be positively charged. Okay? Positively charged. Okay, good. Let's go to the next. Okay, the next question is talking about physics. Okay, we're going to look at a transformer. This is your transformer to step up the electrical power. So, you have a transformer here. You can see there's a primary coil, secondary coil, and a laminated soft iron core to, to connect the two in between. Okay, to connect the two in between. So, what happens is, they will ask you the name first. Okay, name we know that is very easy. Okay, name is going to be transformer. Transformer. Okay, how about function? You know it's to step up. Step up what? Step up the voltage. Step up the voltage. So, we're going to step up. Step up voltage of AC current. AC current. Very important. Kena, uh, kena jadi arus ulang alik. It must be AC current so that it will alternate direction. Alternate the direction. The current will flow Flow this way, flow this way, flow this way, flow this way, according to a frequency. Flow that way, this way, that way, this way, so that it can create the reaction or create uh, the situation that it needs okay, to uh, make the transformer work. So, step up, number one, step up the voltage and of the AC current. So, very important, must have. Okay, if you say step up the voltage, may be accepted. But, to be very safe, step up, must be voltage, must be AC current. Mesti. Or, if you want, don't have step up, you can use step down. Okay? Step down. Or, if you want to be safer, change. Change. Change the voltage of the AC. Okay? Start the voltage, start down the voltage. Okay? And also the change. So, step up, step down is, you can refer to the question lah. If the question is, primary coil more than the secondary coil, step down. Primary coil more than secondary coil, step up. If you want to be safe, use change. Change the voltage of AC current. Okay, that's all. Now, B, state the types of device mentioned in A. Oh, so, this is uh, this is where you're going to do uh, the types. So, there are two types. One is going to be step-up transformer. Okay, step-up transformer. This is when the primary coil is lesser than the secondary coil. It will step up the voltage. When you have the primary coil more than the secondary coil, is going to step down the voltage. Okay, so in BM, we'll call it the transformer injak naik for step-up. Transformer... Uh, injak turun for the step down. Okay, that's all. Okay, now see. The formula given relates the ratio of primary voltage which is going to be VP VP to secondary voltage which is going to be VS. Okay, so let's uh, write that properly. VP, VS and the ratio of the primary coil number to secondary coil. So, NP and S. Why do they call it ratio? So you know that in uh, in uh, when you form one when you study it when you have a over b it actually equals to a ratio a to b ratio. Okay, so that is why it's actually going to be vp to vs equals to the np to ns. Actually like this. Okay, so now they make it into fraction form for you to do simpler calculation. Okay, so let's do calculate the voltage output of the secondary coil. 
okay, of the device, a voltage input of the primary coil is 10 volts with the number of turns for the primary coil is 5 and the number of turns for the secondary coil is 25. Okay, a lot of information. Upper. Let's just write out what we need. VP, VS, NP, and S. Just these four. VP how much? VP, primary coil, 10 volts. Okay, siap. VS how much? VS. Ah, asking you VS. So, VS tak tahu. NP, 5. NS, 25. Ready? Plug in. There's no formula what? VP over VS equals to NP over? Over? NS. Plug in lah. NP, 10 volts. VS, you don't know. You want to find VS. Uh, NP, 5. VP, or uh, NS, 25. So, what happens is cross multiplication. 25, okay, I put in the green. 25 bring up, 5 bring down. Okay, VS bring up. Then you're going to end up with the equation is going to be 25 times over 10 over 5 will give you VS. And that answer will also give you 250 volts, which will prove that this is a step up transformer. So VP, 10 volts. VS now is how much? 50 volts. So step up. Injak naik, injak naik. Daripada 10 volt to 50 volt. So what happens is, you will see here the the coils here. Okay, the picture not very clear lah, huh? but the coils here should be less. Okay, secondary coils should be more. Then you know that it is a step up transformer. So that is what we proved lah. Huh? Okay, here five is more is less than twenty five. Okay, five is less than twenty five. Five is less than twenty five. Okay, sometimes this happens, but okay, five is less than twenty five. So primary less than secondary injak naik. Primary more than secondary injak turun. Here that's all. Okay, E. Judging by the increasing demand for energy supply in the future, the government plan to increase the number of power stations. Suggest the best type of power station and justify why. Okay, so you know that um, energy supply lah. So they want to get more energy. So you know now when we get energy, okay, it's not in the best of ways. Maybe we use fossil fuel. Okay, burning of fossil fuel and all that. So it's going to be very bad for the environment. So since you want to increase in the future the number of power stations, we must make sure that the energy comes from a source that is uh, sustainable. Okay, sustainable means what? Boleh kekal lama. Sustainable means boleh kekal lama. Because if you are not sustainable, what happens is number one, it's going to lead to depletion. Maksudnya, the source, okay, atau sumber, 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 sumber tenaga itu, it is going to finish at some point in time. Okay, deplete. Number two is going to be environmentally harmful because it's not going to support the environment. It's not, it's not friendly, it's not environmental friendly. So what happens is we must suggest a way for us to create something that is environmental friendly. So number one is to create what we call a, a hydro, hydro, uh, hydroelectricity. Okay, hydroelectric dam. Hydroelectric dam is when you are going to have a dam Okay, a dam which is filled with a lot of water and then the water will flow down and then there is going to be a turbine here. Okay, a turbine which is going to spin and create and generate electricity. And this is going to be sustainable. Why? Because you know that hydroelectricity dam actually using the water in the dam. And the water in the dam actually comes from where? Actually comes from uh, uh, this um, um, uh, rainwater evaporate into the clouds and Rainwater come down. Okay, so that is what happens. So hydroelectricity dam boleh kekal lama, sepuluh, dua puluh, tiga puluh tahun pun.